we really take pride in uh, serving our customers the best uh, that we can. But we think about it more in the context of yeah. third channel of choice. We've really been investing quite a lot in digital, so we can properly you know, support and help our customers in their channel of choice. And if they wish to pick up the phone and talk to us, because some of our customers actually uh, love doing so, we, we are happy um, as well. Welcome to Conversations That Matter, a podcast from Unifor. Here, we explore the latest customer experience trends, sales insights, innovations in AI and automation, and more with well-known thought leaders and industry experts. Tune in and join the conversation. Welcome everyone to the Conversations That Matter podcast. I'm your host, Randy Ksar, and I'm so excited today to talk to you about mobile and AI and mobile and customer experience. We have a great guest uh, today. He has over 10 years of experience on leading the product strategy and development of digital products in the financial tech industry, which is awesome. And he is the vice president of global mobile products at Amex. And welcome to the podcast, Jose Quesada. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, we're super excited uh, for you to connect with you. Uh, you know, and uh, I'm a huge fan of, of Amex. I've been a member for a very long time. <laughs> and uh, as always, we wanted to start off with uh, we want to start off with debunking the myth. So, from your perspective, uh, you know, you're dealing with. Uh, the mobile side of things uh, in terms of the, the mobile app at, at Amex and wanted to get your perspective on what is one myth about building a mobile customer experience that you would like to debunk? Because I'm sure there's plenty of them. There, there is plenty, um, for sure. I, I do love this, this question, um, by the way. But the one I'm going to say is the hardest part of building a great experience is not building the app itself. It's not even coming up with that um, killer app. Um, actually the hardest thing when it comes to mobile is driving engagement, um, right? The reason behind that yeah. is distribution is difficult, um, right? You are really competing for attention from consumers in a very crowded uh, marketplace. I rather start that basically yeah. says that um, consumers spend 90% of their app time in only five apps um, every day. So, you know, it's very difficult to get um, their <laughs> yeah. attention, um, right? And the two things to consider that are distribution, um, right? And the other one is you need to kind of lay a bit of a, a path for them uh, in terms of the things that right. you think they should be uh, interacting with um, as well. So it's not as simple as saying build it um, and they will come because simply that doesn't work. Yeah, no, it doesn't. You're very true. Uh, you know, if you think about it, you know, what are the top apps that you have besides Amex? Which ones do you use? I mean. For me, email, probably a social app, and then the, I assume the third one is probably gonna be some financial app, right? So I think I would assume that Amex is like one of the top apps that are out there that people are using. Um, I would like to think so, um, right? And right. certainly we see a great usage and engagement from our customers, uh, right? But to actually yeah. answer your, your question, I've got many, many apps installed in my device, right? Do I engage with them every day? Actually right. not, uh, right? And I think that is the, the yeah. key point that you can probably have many apps that the ones that you actually focus on and you spend time with them is a very limited uh, focus like your email app, some of your social, favorite social media apps, um, et cetera. If you've got a hobby, yeah. probably spend time on that app. Like, you know, I spend a lot of time on one app that's all about sports, uh, right, uh, and schools. As you are building the mobile app there, you and your team, um, you know, how is the mobile app being used to deflect uh, calls at Amex? Because I think, you know, in the business that we're in, in terms of helping customer support organizations, I would assume that's a, a big, uh, you know, goal for you uh, within uh, designing that. It is certainly a metric, um, right? The one thing I'd say is not yeah. the main metric. Uh, in fact, our North Star is customer satisfaction, um, right? This mission is really to build or set the standard for mobile apps. Um, out there um, in the industry. So we keep uh -huh. like a, an eye on CSAT, but also uh, revenue and engagement. Now, and the whole rationale behind it is, you know, happy customers uh, mean engagement, actually means uh, revenue, um, et cetera. And that will right. help when it comes to core volume. Um, the point on core volume though is um, obviously great customer services, 
part of our heritage um, as our brand, right? So, you know, we really take pride in uh, serving our customers the best uh, that we can, but we think about it more in the context of yeah. their channel of choice, um, right? So a different way to answer your question mm -hmm. is, we've really been investing quite a lot in digital so we can properly, you know, support and help our customers in their channel of choice. And if they wish to pick up the phone and talk to us, because some of our customers actually uh, love doing so, we, we are happy um, as well. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Makes sense. So Jose, uh, what are the top mobile app um, features that customers are using? Sure. Um, so this has changed quite a lot over the years, um, right? So long gone are the days where people would just come in, pay the bill, check down transactions, uh, and disappear. So we've got um, a good depth of engagement right. uh, from customers, right? In fact, the app is the largest interaction channel for customers um, today that we are very proud um, about that. Uh, we've seen a great um, CSAT score uh, from our customers um, as well. So virtually everyone is great. very satisfied um, or satisfied, right? But, you know, the point really is Today, you can manage and really enjoy your full relationship uh, with Amex. And that includes my, your cards, your banking products, your account, checking your benefits, uh, booking travel, um, et cetera. The other way to look at this is the market is going increasingly uh, mobile, um, right? And it's not just um, for, for American Express. The, the one thing is, um, and going back to my uh, previous point, again, we try to yeah. serve our customers in their channel of choice, um, right? But if right. they require um, support, uh, we've got tools available to them so they can get additional um, support. And that's where our chat um, experience comes into play, where you can ask us any question and either a chat bot or a human uh, will get back to you uh, with the right answer, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so in, in terms of the uh, top reasons uh, customers would request an agent, uh, I can uh, imagine what they are, but I'd love to hear from, from your perspective. What are some of the top reasons people are, are kind of escalating to talk to a human agent? So it's not so much about actually customer escalating to talk to um, an agent. Um, it is a, a bit different, um, right? So okay. if you think about the different customer touch points, we are very happy or we strive to provide uh, the best um, customer experience, um, right? We've been investing a lot mm -hmm. in discoverability because um, ultimately, um, what I was saying at the beginning of, of the conversation, um, right? You need to let people understand what's available to them, right? And you need to sometimes uh, lay with a path ahead of them uh, when it comes to finding the things that, um, that they need. Um, Right, so the way in which we have uh, approached that is with the chat functionality that um, I was referring to, where you can just talk to us yeah. um, about um, anything. And most recently, uh, we've started or we are working uh, towards having a, a search uh, feature um, in the app um, as well. And, and the way to think about it is search uh, allows you to, um, I guess, find whatever you need um, from the experience. Uh, and what search does mm -hmm. for us, it really helps us decide where you need to go next, um, right? So let's say that you are looking for something, we've got a great answer for you. And we say, well, yeah. here's uh, the thing that you're looking for. Like maybe you are uh, looking for when you've got to make a payment, uh, right? And we answer, well, Randy, you've got yeah. to make a payment um, tomorrow, uh, right? But maybe you're asking yeah. for something we don't have like a straight answer, uh, right? And that's when we may take you to the chat um, functionality, uh, right? And the beauty of um, search and search working in harmony uh, with chat is we use all of that data and that context and we pass it um, to chat. So that way we can decide whether gotcha. we can sense. use a chat bot um, to serve you or actually to your point, we end up scalating um, to an agent, um, right? So. Ultimately, what we try yeah. is we serve you um, in your channel of choice, um, right? And we only scale it to a human unless it's strictly uh, necessary, uh, at least within the yeah. mobile app. Well, that's very interesting. Um, I remember uh, my brother uh, was uh, early on at Infoseek. I don't know if you remember that company way back in, in the- Yeah, uh, <laughs> I do remember, yeah. <laughs> mid to late nineties, right? That was like one of the first search engines. And I remember him, uh, building that he was a product manager there 
and then he went over to Yahoo uh, to do search. And so I'm, I'm, I, I love how you're using search. That's a great way to figure out intent, um, especially with, a, with natural language. Uh, and so that's, that's really cool uh, that you guys are doing that. Um, so, uh, you know, as your c career has progressed, we talked a little bit about in the, in the bio in terms of, uh, you know, you have about 10 years uh, experience building these mobile products. Um, you know, and, and the kids these days, they, they, especially on TikTok, they say they understand the assignment, <laughs> right? Um, so when it came uh, to your kind of career progression and really understanding how mobile, creating mobile products works, what was that point in, in, in your career? Understanding the assignment. Um, interesting. So I've been doing this for a while, um, right? I think first time I started working on mobile was when Apple announced the iPhone 4, um, right? So, you know, lo lo long time back uh, for sure. And also yeah. mobile was kind of a nascent um, channel. And the name of the game back yeah. then was digital disruption, disintermediation, um, et cetera, right? Um, right? And you know, I'm following that the last ten years uh, doing mobile um, at an expert. To truly answer your question, I felt like I knew what I was uh, doing when I understood three things. Um, right, the first one is actually building a great app is very similar to building great software. Uh, right, in terms of principles, architecture, and I'd say most importantly, a great team. Uh, right, and I must say that we've got. An amazing team um, at Amex. The second part is mobile usage and engagement is different, right? So I tend to say that using mobile apps is like snacking. People come and go throughout the day, throughout the week, um, et cetera, for very short periods of time. So, you know, the span of attention is very yeah, limited. Sure. And you need to look at how you make the most of those very short um, interactions. And the third one is... Yeah. Apple and Google help you quite a lot when it comes to creating great experiences, um, right? So there are guidelines, patterns, etc. So I guess my point on that one is do not reinvent the wheel, um, right? And try to conform uh, to For the sure. standards of the platforms as well. No, that's, that's a good point. So, I mean, definitely uh, when the iPhone first came out, that was a huge step. Uh, I remember when I was working at Motorola, helping people build mobile apps there and their developer ecosystem. That was a big part in the Android ecosystem. And that was like around 2009 ish. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's definitely, um, it's, 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 there are resources available, right? Um, so let's get into AI, AI just a, <laughs> a little bit here. Um, so how are you guys leveraging AI within your mobile experience? <laughs> what are some of the um, perhaps use cases and, and technology that you're using? Okay, so uh, we've got very powerful um, data sets um, in the company and also rich AI capabilities, um, right? So actually AI has been at the core of the company for some time um, now. Specifically for the mobile app, what AI has done is it has helped us, it has forced us to think a bit differently about um, the user experience, mm -hmm. uh, right? So we've been using AI for... Yeah chatbots and um, actually for uh, natural language uh, processing for a number of years. Um, now, I'm going back to my uh, search example. That is one area where AI is helping us quite a lot when it comes to creating what I would call a very contextual um, and also practical, yeah. productive um, experience, um, right? So I think you said earlier intent, yeah. um, right? And that's yeah. very critical intent when it comes good. to search and chat. It's probably like the only feature that people actually tell you what they need, uh, right? And it's great because you can learn um, a lot um, from it. But what we do yeah. from an AI uh, point of view is we use transaction data, previous search data, behavioral data, and et cetera. We learn from how you've been using search, and et cetera. And based on that, yeah. we try to be uh, proactive. And, and let me share a couple of examples um, right. with you. So yeah, for example, please. you. You may have booked uh, travel uh, with us. You are en route um, to the airport and you decide to uh, open the app, uh, right? Chances are yep. that if yep. you decide to come to us and ask us a question, maybe the content uh, or what we should be prompting you um, about is finding your lounge or, or the Amex lounge um, yeah. at the airport or maybe reminding you about some benefits that you've got related to your card, um, right? And if we go more to the... Yep financial side of things, 
if you've been uh, browsing the website or using the app and checking your transactions, if you've noticed that maybe there are a couple of duplicate transactions, right? Chances are that you, the thing that you want from us is uh, more information about those transactions, right? And maybe the ability to raise um, a dispute, right? So right. I think AI is going to give us a lot of um, possibilities when it comes to be way more contextual um, and also way more proactive for our customers. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's definitely uh, consumer expectations are pretty high uh, on no one that <laughs> yeah, says yeah. I need AI, but they, 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 they want the context. They, they want the proactiveness, right? Everyone wants that when they're calling a customer service line or they're interacting with whatever channel. So uh, that's great that you guys are doing that. Um, so from a, a future looking, um, how do you see uh, the mobile experience either changing or maybe staying the same? Where do you see it going? Let's, let's say, you know, because everything changes here within a few months. I mean, but we'll, we'll, we'll say like a year from now, how do you guys see uh, the future of the mobile experience? Okay, um, you're like I've brought my crystal ball um, today, but but jokes aside, maybe I'm not going to talk that much about the future, but more like the trends I'm seeing and where I think uh, the market is going and where the experience yeah. um, is going. Um, right. The first one I will mention is conversational um, UIs. Uh, right. So really, the rise of voice um, and search. I know I've mentioned search many times um, during the the podcast. Um, Right, but it's very present um, today, uh, and it's going to become even more uh, present. Right, and just a couple of examples. Yeah, of so course. when when it comes to voice, you probably notice that more and more people are using uh, voice notes um, to communicate um, to people. That wasn't really a thing uh, a few years ago. It was all about like just typing. People are using voice quite yeah. a lot um, more. But also search, you probably notice that um, Apple have made search front and center of your experience with your um, iPhone. You've got it when you swipe across and you go to the, your dashboard. You've got it in every single app. You've got it at the bottom of your landing screen. Uh, next to so I think conversational UIs are here um, to stay, um, right? Also, sure. the other thing I'd say is there's probably an opportunity when it comes to aggregation and personalization, um, right? And this goes back to the point of, we are always fighting for attention from customers, um, right? And, and there's only so many apps yeah. that, that, that you can use. Um, so this hasn't really worked out in the Western world, um, so to speak. It's more of a Southeast Asia thing where, you know, there have been like super apps and certain apps have done aggregation and personalization scale and they have uh, worked out. So. I think there's a bit of a future uh, there. Maybe we've got you know a bit of a surprise uh, when it comes to uh, that type of, of thing coming to to markets like uh, the US, um, etc. And, and the last one I'll say is increasingly there's a much greater focus on push versus pull, um, right? So okay, when that. we talk about distribution and driving engagement, you can just rely on people deciding to go to you. Um, right, you may need to be where people are, or actually you need to nudge people along the way, or give them a, a pro every now and then. Say, "Hey, I'm here. Yeah. Please uh, return to me." Yeah, yeah, definitely no notifications, and but also based upon other uh, data points uh, that they might have already given Absolutely. access, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, permission to. Yeah, for sure. No, that definitely um, is. One of the best ways on creating a mobile experience is using all the uh, the hardware functionality uh, tied in with the software. Um, that's definitely the best way. And, and one of the things that you mentioned uh, was the conversational um, you know, design and conversational flow. I mean, we've been talking about that quite a bit on the podcast with people from Geico, from uh, Discover, uh, from Lowe's, and a bunch of different people. And, and that is definitely over the past few years, a new job, uh, but yeah. also uh, within the within the experience that people are building, whether it's mobile or whether it's on the desktop, I mean, whatever it might be. Absolutely. So we're definitely um, seeing the same thing. That's cool. All right, uh, well, let's get on to um, a rapid fire uh, section okay. of the podcast. <laughs> uh, and these are kind of fun. Uh, there's no wrong answer. Uh, and these are all- Hopefully not. You know, <laughs> some they hopefully, Hopefully you can answer pretty quickly. Um, but one of the things that um, we 
we ask people is if you were to call into a contact center and say you're going for the mobile app and you got Escalade and like you want to talk to a real person and that real person could be a celebrity, a musician or an artist that could solve your problem, put you on your merry way, you're good to go. Who would that person be? Oh, wow. So we've had lots of different answers. We've had some comedians, people say we've had some musicians. Uh, we've had people in their previous life, uh, whether grandparents or something like that. Um, so there's really no wrong answer. Who do you think? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I would need like a famous person um, to be on the other side of the phone, um, okay. right? Yeah. Uh, and the one thing that, or maybe the, the way I'm going to answer this question is I would love for that person to just be kind and nice to me, uh, right? Because, you know, we, we are working <laughs> okay, on the assumption that, that yeah. yeah, yeah, that person is going to solve my problem, um, right? So that is granted. We've got um, that. And I really think it pays off in life to be kind um, and, and nice. So I'm not going to pick a person. I'm just going to say two traits kindness uh and being nice yeah that, that that'll go a long way with me for sure awesome i love it i love it all right so you're based in, in london uh if i were to travel across the pond what would be one restaurant that you would uh take me to okay so yeah i'm based in london i used to be uh in new york uh by the way so i just relocated to back to london um i'll probably take you to a wong uh which is a dim sum um, restaurant uh, in the Victoria area. Uh, and it's truly, uh, it's truly amazing, um, right? And the one thing I'd say about um, London, because, you know, I guess the Brits don't have like uh, the best reputation when it comes to um, QC, uh, right? You can find the best restaurants in the world the same way that you do uh, in some uh, American cities. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th there's plenty uh, to choose from. But yeah, I think A Wong, in Victoria, Chinese place for dim sums. Uh, yeah, um, you can beat it. Awesome. Can't wait. Uh, a mentor growing up, is there someone that kind of uh, taught you along the way and that you um, kind of look back and like, oh, man, that was that was, that was great advice? I think it's fair to say I, I haven't really had that many mentors, um, right, at least early in my life. Um, right, I've yeah. had a few um, at work, and I must admit they've been super helpful to get me where um, I am um, right now. Maybe um, the one thing um, I would say is um, I'm a very optimistic person, um, right? So um, okay. I, I guess one uh, phrase about me and my life is the glass is always half full, um, right? And and when I was way younger, I think at some point I came across something like um, face your fears, um, live your dreams, um, right? And, you know, I've tried to live to it um, a little bit. All right. Cool. Um, and then uh, last book you read. I'm a terrible reader. I'm a very, very uh, <laughs> bad reader. Me too. Um, how, however... There have been two uh, that I've read recently that I truly enjoyed. Uh, one was um, Shoe Dog, um, which is the story of um, Phil Knight um, and how he, you know, uh, set up uh, Nike uh, from the get go. I thought it was yep. quite entertaining, um, and also it's got plenty of good business lessons, um, right? And cool. most recently, the last one I truly, truly read was Balanced, uh, which is a very, very simple book about personal finance, finance management, uh, right? That kind of tells you that life is way simpler than what you think, right? It's all about balancing uh, things yeah. out, um, right? So, so, yeah. But seriously, cool. I'm a terrible awesome. reader. Um, I'm actually jealous of <laughs> my sure. wife and my kids when it comes to that. <laughs> Oh man, we are so we're believe it or not, we're so like my wife can read like three books on a week vacation, <laughs> and my same as my kids, and, and it takes me like literally like t maybe per year maybe two books. I mean, I read a lot on my phone in terms of websites and conversations and stuff like that, but books are are, are definitely <laughs> um, 
I don't know, just the attention span, but um, I guess I haven't found the right yeah. book yet. Maybe that's what it is. I'll yeah. have to try I'm, this out. I'm big on documentaries. Um, so actually, I I try to watch uh, many of them. So maybe I'm more of a visual person. Yeah, yeah uh, probably. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Jose. No, thank you. Uh, it's been great. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Uh, and, you know, we want to... Uh, leave the podcast with uh, if, if someone wants to learn more about uh, about you, how would they go about connecting with you? Oh, yeah. Um, so I am in Twitter. I'm in LinkedIn. Um, so look for um, Jose um, Quesada. You'll find me there. And yeah, you know, I'd love to connect with anyone who wants to hear about anything, whether it's career advice, mobile apps, technology uh, in general. Um, so yeah, my, my doors are open uh, for sure. Cool. We'll put it in the show notes. And uh, we'll make sure people uh, have that available. Cool. Well, thanks again. Um, yeah, uh, for th- taking the thanks time for today. having me. Yeah. No, thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on Conversations That Matter. As always, uh, if you want to give us some feedback, go to your favorite podcast player and leave us a uh, rate and review our podcast. Or just email us at podcast at unifor.com. Well, that's all for today. Uh, and we will see you next time on Conversations That Matter. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations That Matter. Subscribe to our podcast for more great content. And if you want to learn more about the topic we discussed, visit unifor.com today.